Thank you. And our next speaker is Frank Mallon, who is Director uh, of Marine and Archaeology, Shamel Technologies. And the title of his talk is Autonomous Marine Mapping, Current Situation and Future Possibilities. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you very much to the organizers, to Professor Ferron, Professor Park, and, and the whole committee. Really excited to be given the opportunity to talk here. Um, just one note, you're going to get two speakers today. Um, there's two logos here, um, Shamal Technologies. I represent that company, and um, we have a strategic partner, uh, Harvest Technologies, who's helping us in our journey into autonomous technologies. So we're a, a young startup company. Um, uh, set up, um, oh, sorry, wrong button, <laughs> um, set up in 2019, startup company based here in Coast, and we do a lot of uh, marine mapping, shallow water, but we're very much a data-centric company, so we use whatever kind of uh, autonomous technology to get the, the data for the client. Um, so, we listen very closely to our clients. Uh, there's many, many issues, but one issue that we, we always keep coming back to is how do we map the, the shallow waters? Mapping the gaps always has been a, a, an issue and we're, we're trying to help solve that. Um, one of the reasons why there is such a big gap in the shallow coastal areas, um, research vessels, survey vessels, they tend to be quite big. Um, we're trying to bring in autonomous technologies to get that. So it's not safe to get in. Also, these big ships, they're uh, big CO2 emitters. They need lots of people on board, lots of equipment. Um, and we're trying to solve that using autonomous technologies. Um, again, picture of me back too long ago, quite a few decades. The big deep sea ROVs, wonderful at uh, doing their work, but they just don't work in, in the shallow water environment. So going back to mapping the gaps, this has always been a bugbear for me. Um, I, I'm, I'm a bit OCD and I don't like seeing these gaps. You know, I really want to have a 100% coverage in the mapping. So you can clearly see here, um, we, this was a survey that we did about three or four years ago. And even though we used a small uh, monohull 14 meter vessel um, with less than a meter draft, we're still getting gaps. So how do we get those little gaps? And um, uh, working with our, my co-founders in Shamal Technologies, there's airborne solutions, there's uh, autonomous surface solutions and um, uh, 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 AUVs. So we 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 try to we we we're not really in in the mode for research development, technology development, but we need to use because we're a commercial company. We need to use uh, a commercially available. But we um, again going back to some of the previous um, talks. We just don't have the money to get the $200,000, $300,000 equipment. Um, we need to, I'm going to, uh, I know I'm aware of times, so I'm going to go past this. This is the type of commercially available equipment that we want to be using. So we're mixing uh, airborne uh, to, to map those gaps using multispectral RGB camera, and, and hopefully we'll be moving into bathymetric LIDAR. The, the smaller AUVs that are um, more accessible, um, like the Seabird that you see here, um, doesn't take two weeks to learn how to turn it on. You don't need to do extensive piloting. Um, it, it, like, I think uh, it takes an average about two hours for anybody Anybody that can use a smartphone, two hours of training, and you're you're getting ready to go into the water. We have the maritime otter, and then my particular favorite, bottom right, we have the uh, a New Zealand company called um, Boxfish, who are coming out with a AUV ROV hybrid, and I'm I'm really looking forward to um, procuring one of those, hopefully in the near future. Going back to the seabird, um, uh, I'm an archaeologist uh, by primary degree. Um, uh, it's a French-based company, and uh, their little or you, 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 the AUVs you can put on any type of equipment you want, from water quality monitoring, um, uh, video stills, side scan, multi beam, uh, and this is a, a side scan of a U-boat near their headquarters in France. Um, that's near Lorient, 
So I uh, did a lot of research in World War I, World War II uh, shipwreck remains. And then this is just a quick example to show you how small it is, how easy it is to deploy. It's single person deployable, um, very easy to um, learn how to use, very easy to um, set it up and run your mission. You, you can act, it, you actually use a mobile phone with one of their apps on it to, to do the planning. So it, it's more accessible. It's, it's uh, you're talking around the $30,000, $40,000 mode, depending on the, um, the sensor that you put on it. And it's rapidly deployable. So for, for me to respond quickly to clients in Saudi Arabia, I need to be able to mobilize quickly. I can't wait for a big offshore vessel to come in, um, a, a quarter of a million dollar worth of AUV, a, a launch and recovery system. What I need, I need to be able to put all of my equipment into the back of an SUV and be on site in, in less than 24 hours. Um, and doing that, we, we also we we're mixing the airborne, the, the underwater, the surface vessel. We've talked a lot about USVs as well. I'll just skim past this. And as you all know, multi-beam, this is a rapid uh, um, uh, uh, desalination pipeline inspection that we did a few years ago, just to give you an example of, of the data um, that you can get. But I'm also very aware of, I've been working in Saudi for over 14 years, started in Kaist in 2009. Um, and I've used a lot of different types of equipment and it's been mentioned quite a lot in, in some of the previous ones where the equipment just doesn't work in Saudi. It's designed for the Baltic, it's designed for the Atlantic. Um, but when you bring it into Saudi, uh, you might have a temperature limiting switch. So if it goes above 40, 50 degrees, it shuts down. I, I had a, a urgent phone call uh, via satellite phone to a manufacturer in Denmark, wondering why I couldn't turn on his uh, deep ocean plankton sampling equipment. And he saw the funny number from Saudi Arabia. I was like, are you, are you working in the Red Sea? And I said, yes. Ah, we didn't put it in the manual. We have a limit switch of 50 degrees. If it goes above 50 degrees, the control system shuts down. Um, my advice is to, to you, put it in the water, then turn it on. So we put it in the water, surface temperature 30 degrees, but it was, it was enough to cool it down to allow me to turn it on. Um, so even though I don't really, our core focus is not research and development, I've started about a year ago with a, um, a friend of mine, Dr. Ronan Carolyn, to design um, a U surface USV that can deal with the harsh environment, the harsh, the high temperatures, the high salinity, um, to to do the, to do the work that we need for our clients. So, but very much a work in progress, and still looking for funding. If anybody's interested in donating, um, using the Airborne. Um, this is a, a project we did last year for a client in the Red Sea. They were doing a dredging job. And um, we were we had a team on site every day for seven months. They wanted the, the, the process deliverable within 24 hours. It needed to be ready for the next morning's meeting. So we had a team of processors up there as well. And um, it became in the first week, it, it became very apparent that a single silk curtain wasn't going to work. And um, by the end of the week, using our process data, they put out a double silt curtain, which drastically reduced the silt coming from the dredging operation. And therefore, um, uh, re re um, th they could avoid any penalty for destroying the, the, the adjacent coral. And um, again, using Airborne, and um, we've talked a lot about uh, SFM structure for motion today. We are trying to leverage that as much as possible for the shallow water. We, we can, we're getting usable data. This was a project we did just two months ago. Um, and lovely 3D models, maybe not the accuracy that you want for engineering purposes, but good enough for uh, marine habitat. Um, but uh, we're moving on to invest into bathymetric LIDAR. Um, I mean, I'm sure everybody's aware about big systems that you can put onto fixed wing aircraft. Again, hugely expensive. You have to bring in the aircraft or source it locally, uh, pilots, safety procedures. Uh, the, the equipment itself, um, starts around about $2 million, uh, up to $5 million uh, for a really good system. But as a young startup, um, and plus my, my our agenda is to, to map the gaps, uh, we're, we're going to get the smaller um, octocopter uh, deployed um, bathymetric LiDAR. But that doesn't mean we don't use terrestrial. We still use the terrestrial LiDAR, um, and that allows us to do the landforms uh, and any exposed coral as well. But still, there's always going to be that gap. Um, 
This is a, a company from Ireland that uh, I've been in, in discussion with. Uh, they develop uh, uh, beautiful 4K uh, imaging systems mixed with laser, mixed with acoustics, so they get a really comprehensive um, uh, data set. And um, I'm they put this on deep ocean Hugens, the deep ocean AUVs, but I'm in talks with them to try and get a, a, a shallow water system, you know, so you can go out, do your multi-beam, do your sound velocity, CTD, but you're also getting your, your imagery uh, as well. Um, and then I'm going to end up with, with this uh, lovely AUV ROV hybrid. Um, the, this is the New Zealand company um, uh, who I've, I've been have great uh, pleasure of using their equipment over the last year. So I've used a lot of different ROVs over the last uh, 20 years in, in uh, maritime shipwreck research and uh, oceanographic research. But when I started using this, um, I don't want to go back to any of the other systems. So in this mode, uh, it's optionally tethered, but this is fully autonomous, has this little garage. And um, this is a, a video, they're doing trials at the moment. It's not, it's not quite ready for commercial uh, uh, um, release, but it will be very soon. And um, I'm, I, I can't wait to get my hands on one of these. So th this is a real world trial just about three months ago in fish farms off of Norway. Um, so fully autonomous, uh, it's doing fish count um, and then uh, looking for parasites and things like that. But wonderful piece of equipment and it was designed by scientists with engineers uh, in New Zealand. Um, the, the scientists were not happy with the, the uh, available technology. They wanted to be able to fully instrument it with their, their different probes, with um, uh, pH sensors, oxygen sensors, turbidity sensors, you name it. So it, it's very much open architecture. And um, when you procure one, you, you just have to talk to them and say, I need X, Y, Z to be, to be installed. So on that note, um, having moved through that very quickly, I apologize. Um, uh, my strategic partner, uh, one of the engineers from Harvest Technologies is gonna come up uh, and he's gonna explain how, how do we get all of that data back in, in real time? So thank you. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm Jimmy Dean. I'm from Harvest Technology. We're a um, startup from uh, Perth, Australia. We believe we're the only uh, company to have developed a proprietary te technology to connect people, assets and systems in demanding remote austere environments. Essentially, what that means is we've gone down the track of creating a um, protocol, a communications protocol to take a video this big down to this big and at the end of the day, give you a deliverable that is um, a decision-making quality um, plus a lot more that adds on to that. So what we've got at the end of the day is a protocol that we call NodeStream. But what differentiates us um, is how we got there. Uh, after working many, many years offshore, oil and gas, um, uh, remote operations, um, ROVs, and then um, in mining sectors, and then working onshore as project managers, just being aware that when you're on one of these IMR jobs or uh, drilling new, new uh, oil field, there's always complications, there's always issues. When that rigs down, it's a million dollars a day. They're asking the ROV to get get their um, uh, robotic arms to, to get it in certain areas to try and take a picture. You send that picture uh, by email to the client on shore. They send it back to the other side of the world, whoever the manufacturer or the remote expert is. And that's usually the other side of the world. So time zone, you lose that time. They come back. Oh, I need a picture from the other side. So you send that back. Um, and that could take day, multiple days. And um, that's just crazy. Like to, to lose that sort of money, um, just from something as small as being able to live stream um, from, from these sort of environments. So being able to live stream from these environments is uh, extremely difficult. When you're working with satellites, uh, you typically, you've got a lot of uh, packet loss, it's expensive, um, you're sharing your, your, your bandwidth with um, your, business, your business systems, you're sharing it with your welfare network. Um, what we sort of worked out was, 
typically if you could get a, a video stream down around about 60 to 80 kilobits of decision quality um, uh, vision, that's where you had to be. Um, so that's what we did. Uh, so what we have now is what we call the node stream. It's the ultimate remote operation system, fully secure integrated communications platform for real time collaboration, communication and data sharing. So what we're doing is optimizing video, audio and data streaming across any network using uh, existing infrastructure. By optimizing, I mean, we don't send anything that doesn't need to be sent, nothing. Um, in regards to data, audio, video, we are extremely stingy. We don't send nothing that does not have to be sent. Um, so we're, we're well trusted. Um, we're working with a lot of the oil and gas companies um, uh, around the world. Uh, all the major ROV companies, um, all the major food grows, Techneeps, uh, DOFs, all those companies now, they're seeing that they're, or they're being told by the companies like Aramco, Petronas, Petrobras, that you have to um, go down the remote ops um, channel. So uh, they're all coming to us now. Uh, over the last couple of years, they haven't believed what we could actually, we could actually do. So we've had to do a lot of uh, proof of concepts, a lot of trials, um, but we're, we're now getting to that point now, a fair few years into it, that we're trusted. They're actually taking our product and um, I'm running with it. Security um, is quite important. Customers that we have um, don't want that video going, getting uh, taken from some, by somebody else or getting leaked. We use 386-bit um, Gimli uh, encryption with rolling keys. So it's well above military grade encryption. So if no one, it would be quicker for someone to invent their own um, technology than to try and take ours. Um, we've made it extremely survivable. Um, as you know, like satellites, um, congested networks, uh, even being on your 4G when, you, when you're traveling around on a, in, a, in a city, um, you're losing your communications all the time. So we've, we've designed a, a solution that is very, very survivable. Um, once again, we're using very, very small data, so um, it, it's quite, quite easy for us. And um, we've proven we've got over uh, several, hundred, uh, several hundred thousand hours um, of uh, streaming from um, vessels, uh, vessels, all sorts of things actually um, from all over the world. Um, reliability, we're trusted by the likes of um, uh, USV uh, manufacturers and companies. So if you're gonna trust a USV where it's going out in the middle of nowhere, these are big uh, USVs, Fugros, um, Ocean Infinity. So big, big style uh, USVs that go months, months on end. So these aren't small USVs. They're trusting our, our video and our data streaming um to get back and to be reliable so that that's they've got to be able to capture that video and give it to their clients they've got to be able to navigate channels they've got to be able to navigate around other vessels they've got to navigate a lot of things so the reliability of our of our video getting back is very very crucial to their um uh, to their operations so over the journey um we've been going for about six years now we've had to um Every use case is something different. Everyone wants something, uh, something a little bit different. Um, so we've got the node stream, which is our core product, and that's around co being cost effective. That's allowing um, for a vessel to already have their CCTV, already have their ROVs, already have their um, uh, UAVs, drones, all that sort of stuff. And we'll just put our bit of hardware or our bit of software, um, uh, our encoder, in and it will work with your solution. So you don't have a big outlay. You don't have to go and get new cameras, flash cameras, any of this sort of stuff. It will work. We haven't found a camera solution anywhere in the world that we won't work with. It won't work with. It's easy. It's deployable. It's made by ROV techs. So it can go out to a vessel. It gets plugged in, power, ethernet, and video, and we're up and running. Um, so we're, we've made it to be um, very, very easy. Um, what it's doing is, is, is allowing for the right people to be able to make um, decisions. Uh, it's obviously, uh, it can also be used for loss prevention, um, having CCTV on a, um, a vessel that's going all around the world, um, certain things happen in certain places. So just given that, that, that bit of security, um, obviously you pay, uh, companies pay a lot of money to, um, to have these assets all around the world. So it just gives them a bit of, um, uh, bit of uh, sleep, uh, nice sleep at night, knowing that they can uh, actually watch their, watch their um, videos uh, at any time they want. 
we've make all of our uh, solutions um, with enough processing power that we've got enough processing power for um, leftover for edge AI. Um, why you've got the uh, at the remote location, um, why you've got that that full HD video, that's when you can use your uh, your AI, and then we can still stream it and, and get those um gains that you require. You can still record at the um at the uh, remote end, so you can still use that for if you want big data sets. Um, but if you don't need that, you, you need that um, quality to, to make those decisions and to, um, to be able to operate, then um, that, that's the solution uh, for you. And then we've got remote inspection system. This is a higher spec uh, solution. This is more about removing people from uh, inspectors from their vessels. This is providing a data and video synchronized uh, solution. So that's coming back at a quality that you can capture and process. You don't have to be in a remote control center. You can be anywhere in the world, absolutely anywhere in the world. You, you capture that on a decoder, process it, and you've got deliverable quality video that you can, you can utilize and give to your, your clients. Um, big part of that is um, uh, it's mainly around USVs. Obviously, um, you need that, that, that video quality that you're going to give to your client. If you don't have that quality, you're not getting paid at the end of the day. Um, by removing those inspectors off, off of vessels, you don't need such a big vessel. We've got uh, one company now. They don't have um, project managers. They don't have uh, the engineers. They don't have the superintendent. They don't have the um, client on board. So that just leaves the ROV crew. Um, uh, one shift supervisor, they don't need big vessels now. I've got some metrics um, of what they're saving in, in, on the next slide. But it also, when you're bringing these guys back on, on shore, it's starting to give them a bit more work-life work -life balance. And it's also opening up that you don't have to have all your medical Hewitts and everything else to go offshore. You can actually have people of all sorts of um, uh, uh, backgrounds to be able to um, uh, Work, work in that sort of environment. Also allows for, if you've got your best, your top of the end um, inspector, he can be monitoring a lot more jobs. He can be working um, a vessel in uh, India one day, a vessel in Europe the next day, a vessel in Australia the next day. He can also be training people. You can have a lot, of, lot more people come through and actually see a lot more uh, tasks going on because if you've got a remote control center that's got eight or nine vessels, uh, jobs going on, the, the learning curve is absolutely humongous. Um, you don't need as many managers because they're, they're, their overview is um, a lot easier. They're actually seeing the job. They've got access to the job. Um, so there's a lot of benefits by, by having good quality video and data coming back to, to, to allow this to happen. So why are we doing it? We're removing people from risk. That's a, that's a big thing. Um, these are a couple of metrics that we've got just from the last three years. Um, from one USV operation, uh, one USV operator in the last two years has gone from three massive, massive vessels with over 160 people on them. Um, now they've got one medium-sized vessel, they've got uh, two USVs, and they've got, what they've done is put um, a 10-foot container, a satellite in the top of it that goes up and down, and they've got our gear in the bottom. So now they grab vessels of opportunity. They send the ROV and the um, ROV crew out, and that's it. Gets on board, uh, raise the, uh, raise the uh, satellite, um, start streaming, and you've got remote ops there and then on a vessel of opportunity. No cost for um, when the vessel goes off higher, um, when between contracts, it's a massive cost saving. Um, they've just finished a uh, pipeline inspection. It typically took uh, one vessel four weeks to do. Um, and the, that vessel is usually about $250,000 a day. Um, they just did this last, this is the second time they've done this um, uh, pipeline, and they did it in two weeks at 99% carbon reduction. That's a humongous, humongous um, uh, uh, bonus for them. So I've got a couple of um, outlays here. So we've got a just a typical vessel. Um, we can we can dial into their grab all their um, IP cameras or their um, uh, CCTV cameras on board. Um, we can jump into their DVR so we can get access to their to their DVR so we can see their historical videos as well. Um, we can log into any other cameras that they've got on board. So it could be the payload, 
um, be ROV, UAV, um, USV, um, or it could be, um, if it's a remote expert, it can be a, a app on a phone or a headset, and that can um, uh, stream back to a um, onshore site. All of our kit, if it's in your group, you have access to, to it. So if you've got a, um, a downloadable on your Windows PC, um, you can talk to that person on the back deck if he's got an a, a app on his phone. You can talk to every single person on the back deck uh, with their phones. You can talk to the skipper. You can talk to the superintendent. You can talk to the guy down in the um, uh, engine room. Everything has two-way audio. We're even very stingy on, on the audio. We can, we can change the settings on the fly for that. So we actually monitor how much uh, bandwidth we're using. Um, uh, then when, when we've div coded it, then we can put it to the web. So you can, you can get it, anyone that you want. If you've got a, um, a manufacturer on the other side of the world, you can send them a, um, a link to, to jump onto that website and they can see the video live. So if you've got an issue you need to talk to them about uh, rectifying, um, then you can do that. Um, this is a remote expert. So once again, it could be a headset, it could be a, um, uh, it doesn't have to be on a vessel. This could be, we've got a, um, a customer who send, uh, obviously per, uh, Perth WA is absolutely humongous, similar to, to this with the um, size of our desert. We've got the um, water board, we'll send a technician six hours out of uh, mobile mobile range, get to a um, site where he's um, got to uh, do the maintenance, comes up with a um, job that can't be rectified, it's not in his skill set or he hasn't got permission to do it. He's got to travel that six hours back to get um, back into mobile range um, and then obviously he's usually out of hours. So then they have to send another tech out there another time to, to do that. So as easy as, because we, we do all our testing on the world's smallest satellite system. So a, a satellite uh, system uh, that you can pull out of your backpack, put on your car, or even put a satellite system on your car. Um, you don't need the fancy uh, big bandwidths or the costs. They can um, stream at like 60 to 80 kilobits and remote expert. Sorry, I'm getting the wrong wind up. Uh, boy solutions once again uh, we can stream we can stream from underwater assets um, high resolution video um, sample uh, this one's for a client that we're monitoring something so we give them trend data it's go, it goes up to the boy boy to the um, platform in a distance via radio link and then from that um, onto satellite we can do that on um, on, on land as well through trailers um, all, all um, solar powered or wind turbines um, very very um, easily um, I did have a video. Have I got time to play that? 30 seconds. It is 30 seconds, I think. Um, so this is uh, this is showing this showing this is a satellite on a on a car. Um, so what we're doing is streaming from the uh, from the drone back to that that satellite uh, to the con uh, controller. The controller's Wi-Fi to that um, satellite. We're 36 kilometers north of the city. 36 kilometers. So the better quality camera you've got the better quality you've got. You see there on the right, we're only using less than half a meg. So that camera is four over four megs. We're only using less than half a meg to get that video. And we're streaming 36 kilometers. So the better you put in, the better you get out. So it doesn't matter what size of um, bandwidth we've got. All right, thanks a lot for the presentation. Um, and I would like to ask uh, Frank Mellon to please come up and receive uh, the small uh, appreciation gift from our lab. 